my dear students very good morning and welcome to the lecture series session on ec402 nano electronics in the previous class we have discussed about the multiple quantum bells in the quantum bells in general of course multiple quantum bells also and what are all the energy states of multiple quantum bells and how a multiple quantum bell becomes a super lattice that introduct that has that has discussed in the last class that has been discussed in the last class so today we are going to discuss something more about super lattices and its behavior and of course in what way the super lattice is actually uh, working what is the theory behind it the energy uh, level and the energy level and the the energy k vector diagram and what is the behavior of the uh, the quantum bells developed in super lattices what are all the uh, intermediate what are all the features with regard to the uh, quantum wells and uh, what how it is uh, different from the quantum wells triangular quantum wells actually the quantum wells which we have already discussed a parabolic quantum well that we have already discussed and how this parabola or parabolic quantum well has been um, folded at different zones what is called the Brillouin zones and what is meant by zone folding in super lattices all these things we will discuss in today's class and of course after this we will be discussing about the chronic penny model for super lattices actually the theory behind super lattices and its features working and also the energy and the EK diagram energy level and all those things have been very clearly mentioned and discussed by Kronik and Penny. These two scientists done a lot of research on this area and they have developed a model for explaining the behavior of super lattices and the energy wave and the EK diagram, energy K vector diagram and also what is meant by swan folding and how it takes place in super lattices. As we have discussed in the last class, when the thickness of the barrier separating the quantum well is small, tunneling of electrons between the neighboring wells takes place and that results a device what is called the super lattice. And super lattices are really the multiple quantum bells. And this super lattice displays a band diagram similar to that of an electron band in crystal. We know the electron band in crystal structure. So super lattice also display a band structure, a band diagram very similar to that of electron band crystal. The allowed energy bands and gaps in a crystal in a, in a super lattice correspond to much smaller energy levels because the super lattice has a spatial periodicity equal to the sum of the well and barrier system. The spatial periodicity of the super lattice occur is actually the well thickness and the barrier thickness together. That is the special periodicity of the super lattice, which is larger than the lattice cost. So that is why the allowed, allowed energy bands and gaps which are smaller energy levels or energy intervals, smaller energy intervals because of the periodicity of the super lattice which is much larger than the lattice constant. The band structure of a super lattice can be engineered by a proper choice of well and barrier width or barrier thickness. Super lattice can be considered as an artificial solid since their electron energy band structure can be controlled externally. Because the band structure of this kind of uh, uh, system is similar to the ones in crystal, but they do not exist in nature. 
though the band structure is very similar to the one which we see in crystals but this crystal structures are not existed in the nitrate solid that is why this particular device that is super lattice is considered to be the artificial solids engineered by engineers and the scientists or we can control the band structure of super lattices so that it can be created that is why we say it is an artificial solid it's an artificial solid the idea of super lattice was first proposed by isaac kenzu in 1970 and implemented it after a few years the super lattice consists of periodic set of multiple quantum bits in which the thickness of energy barriers separating the integer values by the sufficient is small that is also another important thing to be noted so multiple quantum bits can have the well thickness and the barrier thickness same or less in when the multiple quantum bits becomes a super lattice of course the lattice uh, barrier structure the barrier thickness of the multiple quantum bits when its lattice con when the barrier thickness is less than the lattice constant of the material structure then such a set of system for such a uh, system crystal system which can be considered as a super lattice that is why super lattices are actually periodic set of multiple quantum bits in which the thickness of the barriers or energy barriers separating the individual values made sufficient this small so there is a very small thickness for the barrier that is why the tunneling between the wells are taken place personal tunneling is taken place between the two wells constitute adjacent wells as the barriers become thinner the electron wave functions corresponding to the wells overlap due to tunneling effect so the electron wave function actually here is a two dimensional system having well potential so this electron wave motion so electron wave function corresponding to the well overlap due to the tunneling effect of the adjacent well as a consequence what happens a discrete energy levels of the well broaden and produce energy band so due to this particular phenomena what happens a discrete energy levels of the well broaden and produce energy band that produces energy band in a similar way as happens with the state of individual atoms when they are arranged in a crystal lattice so due to the tunneling effect between the adjacent between the adjacent tunnels this actually create discrete energy levels on the well, of the well which actually produce energy band in a very similar way as that happens when the individual atoms when they are arranged in a crystal lattice the most singular aspect of a super lattice consists of introducing a at introducing at will a new periodicity b in the material that is what i have told you so the band structure of the super lattice can be controlled externally that is the main immediate and very important aspects of super lattice the super lattice which consists of introducing a new periodicity b in the material where b is actually the well thickness plus the barrier thickness that we can just introduce in the material which is equal to the breadth of the well a plus the thickness of the barrier b so since this periodicity could be controlled or that could be introduced in the material we can just create a new material with energy band so super lattice is actually considered to be a artificial solid this in that basis we can consider super lattice to be a artificial solid typical thickness of a and b could be 4 and 2 nanometers of course for 4 nanometers will be the well thickness and 2 nanometer that is a 
two nanometers will be the barrier thickness that is b so a plus b is equal to the width of the or uh, that is the uh, total width of the well plus barrier thickness that is the special periodicity periodicity a plus b an accurate control over this small thickness can only be achieved by techniques for thin film deposition such as molecular dimetic acid or metal organic chemical vapor deposition or this particular thin thickness of film can be layered or that can be achieved with a small thickness of this size 2 nanometer size thickness of barriers and 4 nanometers of well thickness that accurate control of this small thickness can be achieved by the techniques of film deposition or layer film layer deposition as in molecular beam epitaxy or by the help of or by the use of metal organic chemical vapor deposition these two methods are used for forming such a film such a film deposition okay now consider the electron state of a simple two well system shown here so this is a two well system shown here see this is the well and this is the adjacent well the first well has a wave function phi 1 second well has a electron wave function phi 2 and here ev1 is the energy level and ev2 in electron volts of course that is have seen here now let us consider the case figure a shows two neighboring identical quantum wells and corresponding wave function electron wave function and this type of quantum wells are known as double coupled quantum well system so what we have shown here is a double coupled quantum well system and this is the splitting of energy level e1 is put into e1 plus e2 and that is split into another one e1 minus e2 okay this is the energy axis now the solution for this problem is based on perturbation theory in quantum mechanics usually when the wave functions of double quantum coupled quantum wells are concerned the solution for the wave function the electron wave function are obtained with the help of perturbation theory perturbation theory that is available in quantum mechanics and what is perturbation theory according to perturbation theory each origin level of energy say e1 of the isolated well split into two with two energy follow my point so as per the perturbation theory in quantum mechanics it says that the energy level e1 of the isolated wells can be split into two with energy e is equal to e1 plus or minus mod v12 as shown in figure 2 here so this is e the, this energy e1 the energy e1 of each quantum well can be considered to be divided into two, e1 plus e v12 e1 minus e1 e1 that is split of energy level okay and and that is the that is shown in figure and v12 is actually the overlap integral what is meant by v12 v12 is actually the overlap integral what is overlap integral overlap integral v12 is given by integral minus infinity infinity plus infinity phi1 into v z phi2 d z that is the overlap integral the two resulting levels are separated in energy by 2 mod v12 where the magnitude of v12 is an indication of how much one 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 well can influence the energy state of the neighboring one and that is why this particular energy level v12 is known as an overlap integral here the energy e is equal to e1 plus or minus mod v12 so here the two resulting levels of energy separated by 2 v12 isn't it this plus or minus v12 that mod means 2 v12 mod 2 mod v12 
for the magnitude of u12 is an indication how much one well can influence the other one how much one well the energy state of one well can influence the energy state of the other one that is why this integral is called overlap integral for this energy we want to is called overlap integral okay now this is the uh, diagram which i have shown you already and this is the energy which is split into two e1 plus e e1 to an and e1 minus e e1 to and this is what is called this e1 to that is given by the overlap integral and this overlap integral why is it called overlap integral the energy levels or energy states of the one well how much it is influence the energy levels of the other one that is why this is called overlap integral that is shown here see the electron wave motion is shown here one is overlapping the other one like this really so that which is called overlap integral energy states okay now i had told you with this concept in mind we have to define and we have to explain the chronic kenny model for superlative and what are all the important features and what are all, what are men what is meant by the reliance terms and what is the son holding in the uh, parabolic uh, quantum well that is suppose in the cave the energy cave sir actually it's a parabolic quantum well isn't it that parabolic quantum well has got uh, edges folded why is it so and that particular phenomena is called the son holding all these things will see in the next class okay thank you thank you very much